Hey everyone, Teacher Chang here, and today we're going to go ahead and take a look at graphing cubed root functions. Now this is going to be very similar to what we did with our square root functions. So if you haven't checked out the square root functions yet, uh, make sure you go ahead and check that one out as well. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what a cube root function looks like. And a cube root function in standard form looks very similar to what we did with our square root function. The only difference is that we have this little three right next to our root or next to our radical sign. So that's telling us that we have a cubed root. Now we do have an A, an H, and a K. We are not going to be working with any horizontal stretches uh, for this particular video. We're only going to do a vertical stretch. And that's basically what our A value tells us. So our A value will show a vertical stretch by a scale factor or a dilation of whatever that A value might be. So it's going to be stretching out our graph vertically. Uh, and we talked about that with the square root function uh, in the previous video. Basically, if our A value was 2, we're going to stretch it out so it's twice the size um, in terms of its height. Now, again, the reflection over the x-axis will come about when we have a negative value with that a. So if a is negative 2, then we're just going to flip it upside down. And we can see what those graphs look like over here on the right. So if we take a look at this right over here on the right, we can see, well, when a is positive, it has this s-shaped curve right over here. And when a is negative, well, it gets flipped around upside down. So it kind of looks like this right over here. So that's what our graphs will look like if a is positive versus when a is negative all right and then we have our uh, horizontal shift and our horizontal shift is our h value and again it's going to shift our graph either to the left or to the right and again it's going to feel like it's going in the opposite direction so if it says x minus 2 well that means we're going right to and if it says x plus 2 well that means we're going left to the k value, once again, is going to be our vertical shift, which means it's going to be shifting that graph up or down. Now, instead of a starting point, we have something called a point of inflection. Now, inflection, point of inflection just means the point where it starts to bend or it starts to change. So this is our bending point. So if we take a look at our sketch above, the bending point or the change is going to happen right over here in the middle of our graphs. Now, the A value is also going to help us locate our additional points, just like our square root function, except we're not doing a 1, 3, 5 trick. We're going to do something called a 1, 7 trick. Now, everything else looks pretty much the same. So the rise is still going to be our numerator of that A value, and the run will be our denominator cubed times our 1, 7 trick. So let's go ahead and put all of this into action with some of these examples here. So let's take a look at this first one. This first one is our parent function. Function. And we know that it's our parent function because, well, the a value is 1, so a is equal to 1, which means it's not being dilated or multiplied by any factor here. The h value is 0 because we have no h value, and the k value is also 0 because we don't have any k value as well, which means the point of inflection is going to be at zero zero so the point of inflection is at zero zero which is located right over here at the origin now the a value written as a fraction is one over one so if we were to like look at our, our rise and our run the rise is our numerator which is one the run is our denominator cubed, so 1 cubed, times our 1, 7 trick. So if I go ahead and take that 1 cubed, well, that's just 1, and multiply it by 1 and 7, well, that's just going to be 1 and 7. Well, how do I do this? Well, this is what it's going to look like. Our rise is going to be 1. So starting from our inflection point, we're going to go to the right first. We're going to rise up 1, and then we're going to go over 1. And then we have uh, our next point at 7. So up 1 and over 7. So rise 1 and over 7. That's our run. So our run is our 1 and our 7. Now the other direction, I got to do everything the opposite. So when I go down 1, I got to go left 1. And then I'm going to go down 1 and then left, three, uh, left 7. So that's going to be right over here. Now that I have these points, these additional points, I'm going to use them to help us draw our graph. So we have one going in this direction 
and then we have one going in the opposite direction. So here we have kind of that S-shaped curve. All right, so that's our parent function. So let's go ahead and throw in some a, h, and k values here and see what happens. So let's take a look at this next one uh, right over here. So this next one, we do have an a, h, and a k. So our a value in this particular case is going to be 2. And that 2 tells us that we have a vertical stretch. And that vertical stretch is based off of a scale factor of 2. So there's a dilation with a scale factor of 2. Okay, so that's what it's telling us in terms of the transformation. Now, the 2 over here, that's our h value. But remember, h is going to be the opposite, so negative 2. And that means we're going to the left 2. So we're translating the graph 2 units to the left. This 1 is our k value, and that's going to be as is, so we're going to shift the graph up 1. So we're going to take a look at that point of inflection. So the point of inflection is going to be located at our h and our k, which is negative 2 and 1. So these two combined. So negative 2 and 1 is going to be our point of inflection, located right over here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use our a value, which in fraction form would be 2 over 1. Well, that means the rise is our numerator, which is 2, and the run is our denominator cubed, which is 1 cubed, and we're going to multiply it with our 1, 7 trick. So again, it's not going to change to 1 or 7 because 1 times 1 is 1 and 1 times 7 is 7. So what do we do from here? Well, again, basically, we're going to go up 2 and then over 1 for our first point. So up 2 and over 1. And then I'm going to go up 2 again and over 7. So I'm going to go up 2 and over 7. So that's going to be this point over here. Now I'm going to do everything the opposite, going in the opposite direction. So I'm going to go down 2 and over 1. And then down 2 and then over 7. And that's going to be this point right over here. So now that I have these additional points, I could use these to go ahead and sketch out the graph. And the graph connecting these points will look something like this. So we can see that it's similar. It still has that S-shaped curve, but we can see that it's being stretched out vertically twice its height. So everything got shifted or everything got stretched out uh, twice its size. All right, so let's take a look at this next one. Again, each one of these will be slightly different than the previous. So let's take a look at this one here, and we can see that our A value happens to be negative 1. So our a value is negative 1, which means we do have a reflection over the x-axis. And the reason why we have a reflection is because of the negative sign. Now, the 1 does not tells me that there is no vertical stretch. So it's just going to be 1 in terms of the scale factor. Now, the h value is going to be 0 because we don't have an h value. So we're not translating it to the left or to the right. But we do have a k value of negative 3. So that's going to be shifting the graph down 3. So we're going to go down 3 in terms of the translation. Now the point of inflection is our h and our k combined. So that's going to be at 0, negative 3. So 0, negative 3 is located right over here. Now again, we're going to do our rise and our run. So our rise is the numerator. Now, negative 1 is the same thing as negative 1 over 1. So the rise is negative 1. And the run is our denominator cubed. So 1 cubed times our 1, 7 trick. So again, it doesn't really change with that 1, 7. So it's down 1, negative 1, down 1, and then over 1. So there's our first point. And then we have down 1 over 7. So we're going to go down one more, and then we're going to go over 7. So there's our second point. Now we're going to go in the opposite direction. So we're going to go up 1 and over 1. And then we're going to go up 1 and over 7. So there's our next point. And then we could go ahead and just kind of sketch out what that graph looks like. So we're going to have a curve going in this direction now. And we have a curve going in 
the opposite direction. So again, it has that backwards S shape in this particular case because we do have a reflection over that X axis. All right, let's take a look at the next one. And this is where things change up in terms of the A value. So here we can see that the A value is going to be one half. So A is equal to one half which means we do have a vertical compression, uh, but some teachers might still call it a vertical stretch with a scale factor of one half. Okay, so that means it's gonna get squashed down a bit. So it's gonna be half its size in terms of its height. So we're gonna have something really, really flat here. All right, so now we have our H value. And remember, it's gonna be the opposite. So H is negative two, so that's left two. And then we have our k value, which is 4. So k is equal to positive 4, which means up 4 in terms of its transformation. So the point of inflection, the point of inflection is the negative 2 from the h and the 4 from the k. So negative 2 and up 4 will be right over here. So there's our, our point of inflection, the point where it's going to change directions. So we all start at that point of inflection. Now we're going to take our A value and we're going to figure out our rise and our run. So our rise is the numerator, which is 1, and our run is the denominator cubed, and the denominator is 2. And we're going to cube it, and we're going to multiply it with our 1, 7 trick. So that means if I did 2 cubed, 2 cubed is 8. 8 times 1 is 8, and 8 times 7 is 56, which is probably not going to fit on our graph. So most likely, we're only going to fit in this first point over here. All right, so let's take a look at this. We're going to rise 1 and then over 8. So rise 1 and over 8. So rise 1, up 1, and then over 8. So we have 8 right over here. So there's our first point. The second, so we can't fit the second point because we're not going to be able to run over 56. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to down one and then over eight. And that's going to be this point over here. Now, if you do want to have an additional point, we could just do that up one half and then over one. So if I go up a half and over one, that's a point over here. Same thing down a half and over one. That's a point over here. So if you want to have that point in there just to help guide you draw your graph, you're more than welcome to put that in. So our graph is going to look something like this. So I'm going to go through that halfway point, and we can see that we do have this really thin S-shape curve here. So it's kind of like taking our graph and we're kind of squashing it down uh, so it's getting closer to a straight line. All right, let's take a look at the next one. And this next one, again, slightly different. So this is the last one we're going to take a look at. So if we take a look at this one right over here, we do have an A value. And the A value is going to be negative 3 over 2. Okay, so because we have a negative, we do have a reflection over the x-axis. So there is a reflection. Okay, and that's because it's negative. We also have a vertical stretch with a scale factor of 3 over 2. Okay, so it's the absolute value of our A value, which is 3 over 2. Now, 3 over 2 is greater than 1. That's 1 and a half. So that means it's going to be stretched out. It's not a compression, but it's going to be stretched out vertically. So it's going to be a little bit bigger than the original parent function, the first one that we just, uh, the first one that we drew. All right, so let's take a look at our h value. The h value is going to be positive 6. Remember, always the opposite. So that means we're going to go right 6. And then our k value is going to be negative 5. So that means we're going to go down 5. So our point of inflection is going to be the h and the k. And that's going to be located at 6, negative 5. So right 6, down 5 will be somewhere right over here. OK. So now we're going to go ahead and do our negative 3 over 2. We're going to use that negative 3 over 2 to figure out our rise and our run. So our rise is going to be the numerator, which is negative 3. And our run is going to be that denominator cubed 
times our 1 7 trick. And again, we're probably not going to fit that 7 because, well, we got 8 times 1, which is 8, and 8 times 7, which is 56. So we're not going to fit that 56. But we can fit in that negative or that negative 3 for our rise and then our 8 for our run. So I'm going to go down 3 and then over 8. So I'm going to go down 3 and then over 8 which is right over here. And then I'm going to go in the opposite direction. I'm going to go up 3 and then over 8. That's going to be this point over here. Now, if you want an additional point just to uh, help you with your graph, well, remember, negative 3 over 2 is the same thing as negative 1 and a half. So I could go down one and a half and then over one. So you could always go over one with whatever that A value is. So up one and a half and over one. So that's going to give us an additional point here. And then we could use that to help us sketch out our graph. So it's going to go through that point right over here. And it's going to go through the other two points that we drew earlier. Right, so there's our S-shaped curved going in the opposite direction because it is a reflection over that x-axis. All right, so that's how you graph a cube root function. I hope this helped out. Um, if you have any questions, again, leave a comment. Uh, don't forget to like the video and subscribe uh, and share this with your friends as well. All right, good luck, enjoy, and have fun.